Our subject this morning is entitled as the woman, a woman in white. Let's open our Bibles and go to Revelation chapter 12 and read verse 1. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1 says, And there appeared a great sign in the heavens. The Bible says, A great sign appears in the heavens. What is so special about this sign? That the Lord made this sign appear in heaven. If so, what could be the sign? The Bible is very clear on that. Let's very prayerfully. The Bible says, come with me to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great sign in the heavens. Now the Bible says, a woman. A woman appeared in the sky. In the Bible prophecy, unlike literal tongues, this is highly symbolic. Woman represents the church. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many women does the Bible talk about? Singular? Plural? Here. Technically, how many? One. One. I've already told you, there are 30,000 Christian denominations only. Are you getting my point? 30,000 denominations, Christian denominations. The Bible says a woman appeared. Who is this woman? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2 says, For I am jealous over you, and I have exposed you as a chaste virgin to how many husband? One husband. How many husband? One. One. How many church? One. And who is this woman? The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2, I have likened my... Can somebody say that? What verse is that? I have likened my daughter of Zion to a lovely and a delicate woman. Are you with me? He says to Zion, this is my lovely and delicate woman. Who is that woman? The Lord admires. Isaiah 51 and verse 16 says, God says to Zion, thou art my people. Woman in the Bible says, it is the church. But anytime you and I go and try to find out the church, the true church, how can I be sure or confident? Now the Bible gives us tips to identify. Bible and Bible alone. I want us to kindly look at this. A woman or this church, number one, is clothed with what? The sun. And what does the woman have? A moon under her feet and upon her head there is a crown and there is a crown of how many stars? What kind of a church is the Bible talking about? Have you any time seen a church in London wearing the sun? Does that church have the moon as its foundation? Have you seen a church with 12 stars? Not physically. Are you ready for the exploration? Come with me. A woman is the church. The first one the Bible says is the Bible says, this woman was clothed with the sun. The most important character of a church is simply to be clothed with the sun. You and I are the church. And if we claim to be the church, the first question that I want to ask myself is, am I or do we as a church have this clothing called the sun? And so here is the next question. Who is the sun? Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2 says, But unto you that fear my name 
shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. You know, friends, praise God for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Of all the professing Christians, Seventh-day Adventists must be the foremost in lifting Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. It's not about our doctrines. It's not about your time. It's not simply about the Sabbath that you come and go on. It's about Jesus and Him crucified. Yeah. The cardinal person in the church is not the preacher. He's not somebody who is talented. He's not the choir. I want us to look at the Son. Are you clothed with Jesus, the Son of Righteousness? Do you know Him personally? Or you know about Him? You know, friends, Christianity is not what you know or what you do. Christianity is whom you know. It's not what you do. Whom you know will change what you do. Christianity is not about rules. It's about relationship. You have a relationship with God. He comes inside of you and He empowers you. He enables you to keep all the commandments jesus is the son now the bible says the same woman had a moon under her feet in other words the church is based it has got its fundamental premise where on the moon wait a moment if jesus is the son Let's talk about the real sun and the real moon. What's the difference between the sun and the moon? Just from the scientific point of view. The sun has light of its own, but the moon merely reflects. In other words, no sun, no moon. If Jesus is that sun, what is the moon on which this woman, the church, is based upon without that there's no church where does the woman stand where is the woman's feet grounded on the moon so what is that moon looks like there's no moon today you hear stuff like this once in the blue moon the bible is very clear are you ready for the exploration praise god the bible talks about this wonderful experience in revelation chapter 11. you know friends tell me i let me stimulate your thinking what is that fundamental the only base on which our church stands Somebody said it here. Somebody said it. Louder, please. The word of God. This is the moon. And this reflects Jesus. And you and I must be grounded not in the pastor's sermon. Not in the evangelistic series. Study the word of God. The Bible says there were two witnesses. How many witnesses? What are those two witnesses? Praise God. The Old Testament and the New Testament. I want to tell you a story. Are you ready to listen to this story? This is what will happen if you and I don't read the Bible. There was a certain church that was getting ready to do missions. And the pastor said, I'm going to conduct a series of Bible studies and get you equipped. So I want all of you to come and attend for the next eight weeks of training. But the was one person who was not really interested in coming and attending but he was interested in missions but there was another man who was deeply interested and the pastor said before I take you out on an international trip on this evangelistic endeavor I'm going to have an interview if only you qualify and pass I will take you if not I will leave you here and so the first man goes there to the pastor the pastor asked him only four simple questions how many questions four this was the first question he said how many books are there in the bible very simple how many six to six second question he said how many books are there in the old testament how many 
29. 39. Third question. How many are there in the New Testament? 27. You just multiply 3 into 9. Simple. 27. Last question was a little tricky. You know, pastors are very tricky at times. He said, which is inspired? Is it the Old Testament or the New Testament? Which is inspired? Old? Both. 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 Old. So how much of the Bible is inspired? So when he said Old or New Testament, what do you think was the right answer? Both. And, so you, and the pastor said, good, you are qualified. But the other man who did not attend, he was not really serious. He just wanted to have a pleasure trip. As he was coming inside, he was very nervous. But the man said, don't worry, man. The pastor is asking only four questions. First question, you tell 66. Second, you tell 39. Third, you tell 27. But the last one, the pastor is very tricky. Make sure you tell both. And here goes the pastor. He never concentrated. The pastor asked him, so how many children do you have? 66. Second question, how long have you been married? 39. How did you get sick? Third question, how many more children are you planning to have? He said 27. The pastor was very upset. You think you are a stupid or I am a stupid? He said both. <laughs> this is what happens if you are not grounded in the word of God. Come on, repeat after me. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Correct? But the most important thing, God says, John chapter 6, Search ye the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Will you promise God that beginning from this week you will stand on the moon? Yes. Amen. The reason why most of us are on slippery ground is because we are not on the moon. Jesus is the son of righteousness. Number two, he also has given us the moon. Let's go look at the most important feature and that the woman has a crown. Where do you put the crown? On the head. And so this is very cardinal. And on the crown, the Bible says, where how many stars? Twelve. Let's just back up. What does woman mean? Church. What does sun mean? Jesus. What about the moon? The word of God. What does star mean? Not really angels. Stars. Do you have stars in your church? How many stars? Why does the Bible particularly talk about 12 stars? I see most of you are seeing stars. Come with me to Daniel, the 12th chapter. Are you with me? I'm going to ask one of you to quickly read it for me. This is the only verse I'm going to ask the church to read for me. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. What does the word star mean? Represent. You're right. Getting ready. Daniel 12 3. Somebody quickly read it for us. Those who are wise uh -huh. shall shine. And those who turn away to righteousness like the stars forever. Like the stars forever. If you turn somebody from unrighteousness to righteousness, you are a star. Amen. And all of us. Do you know why does the Bible talk particularly about 12 stars in the New Testament? Jesus Christ established this church with the help of the 12 disciples. Very simple. And that's why those of you who missed last night. How many gates? How many names? How many pearls? How many foundations? And what were the names of the foundations of the 12? No. That was the gate. Praise the Lord. Thank you, parents. Let's continue. Let's go to the next one. And here is the description. What we have preached now is just the introduction. 
So it is time now for me to begin my sermon. You can clock your sermon right now. Let's go here. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. The Bible talks about great controversy. The great controversy is not between two superpowers. It is right here in your mind. It is the battle for your mind. This evening I'm going to talk about a spiritual message about how the devil is battling for your mind. Right now it's happening and the controversy is between Christ and the devil. Now, there appeared a great sign in heaven. That's the church that you and I belong to. We are clothed with Jesus. God has given us the word of God. He has established with the powerful 12 apostles. But the Bible says in verse 3, Revelation 12, 3, and there, let's go to the previous one. And there another sign was seen. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. How many heads? Seven. You know who appeared? What kind, what kind of a dragon appeared? What was the color? What is its name? Dragon. Who is the dragon? You know that very well. Who is the dragon? Let's now go very prayerfully as we now unfold. Let's go to the next one. Okay. The Bible says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now we are going to go to heaven a little bit and try to find out how sin originated because Revelation 12 is a great chapter. The Bible says, and they were cast on to the earth. I want you to look. This is the real controversy that's going on in the last days. The dragon stood before the woman. In other words, it's the devil that is now wanting to attack God's people and this woman is about to give birth to a child it talks about the birth of Jesus that when she bears he might devour her child and all of us know what was the sex of the child the Bible says male child and this child was going to rule all nations and with a rod of iron I want you to look here. This morning we are going to very prayerfully look at the great controversy that's going on in heaven. First, the Bible says in verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Are you with me? Let's very prayerfully look at the two parties involved in heaven. War in heaven. Can you imagine? How can we talk about war in heaven? The Bible says, Michael and his angels warring against the dragon. Now here's the question that you need to ask. Who is Michael? Jesus Christ. And what does the Bible talk about Michael? You remember Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time, who will stand up? Michael? Michael the archangel. You know Paul, what does the Bible say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16? Every Seventh-day Adventist must know this word. For the Lord himself shall descend with the sound of an... What angel? Praise the Lord. And who is that? Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Michael, who is Jesus and his angels, are warring against the dragon. And what does the devil do? This dragon... And his angels war. That war that started in heaven is still continuing in your heart and my heart. That's what the great controversy is all about. Now, but he did not prevail, and neither was there any praise. Now let's go to Revelation 12 9 and find out who this dragon is. Very simple. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. This morning, I'm going to give you four simple steps how to identify a true church. How to identify a true church. Let's now go to Revelation chapter 12 and we will read verse 17.
Number one, how can I know the true church, the remnant church? This is the first character of a true church. Let's go to Revelation 12, 17. I'm the dragon. Who is the dragon? Satan was enraged over how many women? I want you to know. How many? One. Is the devil angry with all the churches? Yes or no? Definitely not. How many Lord? One Lord. How many faith? One. How many baptism? One. How many hope? One. How many husband as we saw? How many virgin? One law? One faith? One baptism? One hope? One virgin? One husband? How many churches must be there? Do you know what kind of a church is that? We're going to look at the Bible exclusively. Of the dragon was angry not with all the churches but with one church. What is the church? Went to make war with the rest of her seed. The first identifying mark is that who keep the commandments of God. The Bible doesn't say who keep nine commandments. Are you getting the point? The Bible is very clear. This is a special group. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant. Do you understand the point remnant? You know how much is remnant? What is left? How many were remnant during Noah's time? Eight. What about Sodom and Gomorrah's time? How many were remnant? Don't you ever get discouraged when you see a small crowd in your church and my church. The concept of remnant. The Bible is clear. Who keep the commandments of God. And in the same first point, let's look at the second phrase. Let's go to Revelation 12, 17. Now the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, let's spend just a moment here. Commandments of God we understand. But this church has the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ that the church must have if it has to be a church? Praise God. You want to give me the words? Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next one. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Shall we say amen? The church that calls itself a church must keep the commandments of God and must have the testimony of Jesus. Point number two. How can I identify a true church? Come with me to Revelation chapter 14. Let's go to the next one. Revelation chapter 14 talks about three angels' messages. How many angels? Three angels. Unless the church has three angels' messages as a part of its proclamation, the Bible doesn't authentically approve, complement or supplement. Now let's go very prayerfully and have a look at what the three angels' messages are. Because each of them is a message in itself. Revelation 14, 7 says, Fear God and give glory to Him for the art of His judgment is done. Wait a moment. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of water. Do you know what is the only place in the whole Bible you will know how to worship Him who made the heaven and earth and the sea and the waters? You know what's the only place the Bible talks about? The Sabbath commandment. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and sea and earth and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You remember last week's sermon? Very important. Worshipping God. Let's go to the next angel. The Bible says, There followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Just hold on for a second because that will be an exaggeration at my end. Let's go to the next one. Verse 9. Verse 9. Revelation chapter 14. Verse 9 and 10. And the third angel followed them saying, 
with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. In other words, the church not only keeps the commandments of God and has the testimony of Jesus, this church believes in the proclamation of the three angels' messages. Hallelujah! Amen. First angel, fear God, give glory to Him, worship Him. Second angel, Babylon is fallen. Third angel, do not receive the mark of the beast. Let's go to the third identifying mark of a true church. Let's now go and stop here. Just one, one slide before. Yes, here we go. The third one, it believes, fear God and give glory to Him. I want you to read with me the second phrase. For the hour of His judgment is come. Might come, will come, is come. In other words, there is a certain specific time frame in which this church begins its operation. Because the Bible says, for the hour of his judgment is come. In other words, this church starts proclaiming about a certain event called the judgment and its hour. Praise God. In 1844, that's what precisely happened. Hallelujah. Amen. A church that keeps the commandments of God. A church that has the testimony of Jesus. A church that has the proclamation on the package of the three angels' message. And a church that believes that the hour of his judgment is come. Amen. Last but not the least, let's go to Revelation chapter 18. I want you to come with me to Revelation chapter 18. Beginning from verse 1 onwards, this talks about a real hallmark, an identifying mark of the last day remnant church. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and it has become the dwelling place of demons, and the prison of every unclean spirit, and a cage of every unclean bird which has been hated because of the wine of the anger of the fornication. This is where it's very important. Let's now go. The Bible says in Revelation 18.4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of Come out of her. Who is this her? Who is this her? Because the fourth identified mark of the remnant church is that this church calls God's people to come or walk out of her. Do you know how many women are mentioned in the Bible? One is Revelation 12, that's the true church, and you know where is the other woman mentioned? Revelation. Revelation 18 asks us to come out, but where is the description of that woman? Do you know what you call that woman? I will give you a clue. The harlot. Babylon, the mother of harlots. Do you know what kind of a dress this woman wore? What was the color of that woman? Scarlet. Purple? Scarlet. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. Now I want to just show you another slide, which will just give us very briefly the difference. I want you to look. Do you see both the women? On the left side is Revelation chapter 12. The true church, this church, has the glory of Jesus Amen. and it's founded on God's work and it is absolutely established by the blood of Jesus by the 12 stars the apostles of the Lamb but this sign that you see on the right side is Revelation chapter 17 I wish we had more time to study verses 3 verses 4 and verse 5 the Bible says this woman had what in her hand? What does she have in her hold? What does she hold? A golden cup. What does that cup mean? Abomination. Abomination, okay. 
What does cup represent? What do you do with a cup? Drink. You drink. What do you drink with a cup? You don't drink water with that kind of a golden cup. You don't drink juice with that cup. You, yes. What do you drink? You drink only wine. This woman is not a white woman. She's clothed in scarlet and purple and she also is very attractive and she holds in her hand not the Bible but this golden cup which refers to the false teachings if you are not careful that wrong woman the wrong church the wrong doctrine will intoxicate you with her erroneous teaching and so the Lord says come out of her my people do you believe in three angels messages yes or no yes. friends I want to tell you with all my heart Jesus is coming soon Amen. and is preparing you and me that he will take us back home and he wants you to be serious he wants you to be spiritual. He wants you to start into a lasting relationship with God. But don't you ever be satisfied because you have the truth. How many neighbors in your locality have you told about Christ and commandments and three angels and Sabbath in the past three months? God is warning you. Let's look at the next one. The Bible is very clear. Rewarded her as she has rewarded you, double to her double according to her works in the cup which she mixed, mixed double to her. All the doctrines, all the erroneous teaching that now flows from this golden cup, from this is considered as abomination. Now let's look at the next verse that brings to us, this is that woman who glorified herself and is lived in luxury for she says in her heart, I sit as a queen. Next one. And I'm not a widow. Revelation 18.7 And I do not see mourning at all. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen. Right? One more time. Revelation 18.7 warns the remnant church members. Come out of her mind. Do you know what is Babylon? The Bible says... Babylon is fallen. And you know what is the second angel's message? Because she made, come on, continue with me. She made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. How many of you know what is the meaning of fornication? Do you know the meaning? This Babylon in the world, the false church is giving you the cup and that cup is the wrath of her fornication you know what does that mean fornication is a relationship outside of marriage in other words it is illicit most Christians do not have a relationship with Jesus and they are outside of a relationship with Jesus but they want to have children we are committing spiritual fornication in other words you want works and you want to do works and you're interested in the product of your hard work without having a relationship with Jesus. You'll be a failure. That's why Jesus says, I want to repeat one more time. Y minus X is equal to zero. Y refers to you. X refers to Christ. If you subtract Christ from your life, you're equal to zero. What is the Bible verse? Except ye abide in me, ye can do nothing. Y minus X is equal to zero. Y plus X is equal to infinity. Infinity. Philippians 4.13 I can do many, many things. Does the Bible say? All things through Christ who strengthens me. We want to go to the last one and then we end. I thought I had another one. Okay. Will you please bow down your heads with me as we take a decision this morning? A woman 
in white. And a great sign is appearing right now in the heavens. God says, a woman. I have only one church. And that's the church I want you all to belong to. Will you please pledge your allegiance to this own church? A church that has Jesus as a glory. A church that continues to have the Son of Righteousness, who alone is the attraction. A church that's based on the moon. Do you reflect Christ? Are you based on the word of God? This morning the Lord challenges us not to be doctrinal Christians, not to be theological Christians, not to be namesake Christians, but those of us who will stand on the moon, we will be firmly grounded on God's word. The Lord is serious as he presents to you the 12 stars a church that has been established by the very blood of Jesus. And it is his desire that you be a star. That's why when the Lord is going to crown you, how many souls you save, those many stars will be found embedded on your crown. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. Will you take your gospel commission seriously? And stop telling the people about Christ. But the great red dragon is wrath against you. Because he knows that he's got a very short time. But the first character is that. The Lord tells. I want you to be a church that will keep my commandments. If you love me. Keep my commandments. And I want you to have the testimony of Jesus the spirit of prophecy and I'm giving you the three angels message the remnant church we have no other message to preach in this world except for this gospel the everlasting gospel the three angels message will you please stop giving glory to yourself and give glory to God fear God give glory to him Crucify yourself and ask the Lord to be glorified alone. Worship Him. Don't worship your talent. Stop worshiping your car, your job, your status quo, your standing, your qualification, your academic, your pursuit for academic excellence. Stop it. Worship God alone. Because Babylon is fallen. Don't commit fornication. Don't stop having a relationship with Jesus. Anything outside of a relationship is illicit. Don't you ever dare to drink of the wrath of the wine of the fornication. Because the scarlet woman is a mystery, abomination. She's the mother of harlots. But praise God, there is a very special hour of judgment. God has specially chosen this church this moment in 1844 and we undergo an investigative judgment process. Right now Christ is pleading for you and for me. It is time for you and me to come home. Lastly, God has so many people sincere, diligent, looking for his word, who he wants to be a part of this remnant church. And it is your duty to go on town. Come out of her, my people. The Bible says in Jeremiah 51 and verse 16, Isaiah 51, 16, God looks at Zion and says, Thou art my people. We are marching to Zion. We are marching to Zion because you are God's people and he has likened you to a lovely and delicate woman. 